Hello friends, today we will discuss one more very important topic that is the anatomy of the urinary bladder. So this is Dr. Yusuf signing from Aljof University. So as you know the urinary bladder it's a very important pelvic organ which will be collecting the urine and it acts as a reservoir of urine which is actually formed in the kidneys. So this is a hollow muscular organ which acts as a reservoir of urine and this is present in the um, most anterior part of the, the true pelvis. The position of this uh, varies according to uh, the amount of urine which is present in the bladder as well as the age. In case of children, this uh, uh, bladder will be a abdominal pelvic organ. So it will be partly in the pelvis as well as partly in the abdomen whenever it is empty as well as even in when it is full. So in both the condition whenever it is empty or full uh, in either condition it will be uh, a abdominal pelvic organ. And if you see the bladder neck, neck of the bladder is here. This is the bladder you can see here. These are the two kidneys which are actually uh, where the uh, urine is formed and this is passed through the ureters. These are the two ureters and they are draining into this. This is the urinary bladder and the neck of the bladder is here. This is called uh, the neck of the bladder. So this neck of the bladder will be again di different in uh, 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 depending on the age. In case of children, this will be in the upper uh, border of the uh, pubic symphysis. It will be in the upper border of the pubic symphysis. Compare it with that of the adult, it will be in the lower border of the pubic symphysis. Uh, we'll see the relation of the pubic symphysis uh, to the uh, this uh, neck whenever we uh, go through this lecture. In case of adult, so we have seen that in case of children, this is an abdominal pelvic organ. But in case of adult, this will be actually a true pelvic organ whenever it is empty. So whenever it is empty, it will be a true pelvic organ. But when it is full, it will expand to a large uh, extent and it becomes ovoid in shape and now it becomes uh, abdominal pelvic. So partly it will be in the uh, pelvis and partly it extends up to the abdomen. So that's why it becomes abdominal pelvic. So whenever it is empty, it will be a pelvic organ. But whenever it is full at that time, it will enlarge to a such a large extent that part of the bladder will extend even into the abdomen. So it becomes abdominal pelvic organ. And as I said before, the uh, if you see the neck of the bladder, it will be in the lower border of the pubic symphysis. So here this is the pubic symphysis. And here is the this is the neck of the bladder. If you see the uh, rate of descent of the uh, bladder initially, as we see in case of children, it will be uh, higher up in the upper part of the pubic symphysis and in case of the adult, it will be in the lower part. So it is uh, descending uh, as the age progresses. So from uh, 0 to 3 years, the descent of this bladder neck will be very rapid. From 3 to 9 years, it becomes slow and by 9 to up to puberty, it becomes negligible and from puberty to the adult life where it becomes uh, constant after a, 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 a certain extent of descent uh, this becomes slow and then becomes fixed okay so this is how uh, the descent of the bladder will be taking place from 0 to 3 years it will be very rapid and from 3 to 9 years it becomes slow and then after 9 years it becomes negligible up to puberty and from puberty to uh, adult it becomes slow if you see the shape whenever it is empty or full so this is how it looks like when it is empty it is smaller and when it becomes full then it is extending up to the even into the abdomen so it is an organ which is present in the pelvis anterior part of the pelvis so this is whenever it is empty empty bladder this is the shape of the bladder so whenever it is empty it looks tetrahedral in shape so this is tetrahedral in shape almost so whenever it is empty but when it becomes uh, filled with urine when it whenever it is full whenever it is full bladder then it becomes 
much more uh, enlarged and ovoid in shape it becomes ovoid and it extends even into the part into the abdomen so that's why now it becomes abdomino pelvic organ if not it is a true pelvic organ capacity in case of an adult uh, will be average will be from 120 to almost uh, 320 ml um, average being almost 220 ml so around 200 ml uh, will be of urine will be the average capacity of the uh, the urine bladder uh, the sense of filling uh, will start will uh, from the uh, uh, 100 ml to up to 150 ml so the uh, urge or the sense of filling will become uh, from 100 ml to 150 ml desire to maturate that is the urge to maturate becomes starts from 150 ml up to 250 ml then the physiological capacity uh, of the bladder is different from the anatomical capacity in case of physiological capacity it becomes uh, from 250 ml up to 40 50 ml is the physiological capacity of the uh, uh, urinary bladder in case of a normal uh, adult average adult then it becomes painful after this after 450 ml it becomes painful to hold the urine so the urge starts from 150 to 250 ml and it becomes very painful at the uh, level of 450 ml and by 800 ml it uh, it can volunt involuntarily empty itself so once uh, it becomes almost 750 to 800 ml even without uh, 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 you, uh, uh, even if you uh, try to hold at this level you cannot hold it become uh, empty itself involuntarily even if you try very hard to hold at this level almost to, uh, at the level of 750 to 800 ml and the anatomical capacity is almost one liter so this cannot be uh, uh, withheld because by 800 ml it all almost involuntarily empty itself but in case if there is any uh, obstruction or constrictions are there at that time uh, it can go up to one liter and whenever it goes up to certain to such extent then it easily ruptures so it cannot hold at to that level okay so it will rupture by one liter so this is the maximum capacity uh, with only by some obstruction severe obstruction which can be held that is called as the anatomical capacity that is the maximum capacity it can hold one liter so the average is from 100 to 300 ml 200 being uh, the average capacity the sense of feeling starts from 100 to 150 ml and the desire to maturate starts from 150 to 250 ml and the physiological capacity is from 250 to 450 ml and it becomes very painful uh, when it uh, comes to up to 450 ml and after that it becomes uh, more and more painful and by 800 ml it can easily involuntarily uh, empty itself even with all your uh, 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 holding and other things you cannot hold it after uh, 800 ml it, uh, even if you try to hold uh, you cannot uh, so it will be uh, involuntarily empty itself and the uh, anatomical capacity is one liter uh, which cannot be uh, possible if it reaches such an extent uh, it ruptures okay so this is the average capacity as well as the uh, the different levels at which you feel the sense of uh, filling and desire to maturate and other things <clears throat> coming to the presenting parts so the uh, the bladder whenever it is empty it is much more easy to define different parts because when it gets filled up it becomes almost ovoid in shape okay so uh, uh, the uh, different parts will be difficult to identify so whenever uh, this bladder is empty at that time we try to identify the different parts so uh, it has an apex as a base because it almost looks like a triangle so it has an apex so apex is almost anterior here which is near the pubic symphysis you have seen so here will be the the apex of the bladder this is the apex of the bladder and the base will be just opposite to that here will be the the base 
so it is behind so this becomes the the base of the bladder between the opening of the two ureters and the opening of the urethra so between this uh, uh, three structures will be the base so this is called as uh, the trigone because uh, it is triangular in shape so this is the apex here in the front and this becomes the the base then we have the superior surface which is on the top so again you can imagine uh, this picture is not very clear to uh, to identify anyhow this surface becomes the superior surface and the side surfaces become the the inferior lateral surfaces so here will be one inferior lateral and on the other side will be the other inferior lateral surface so this is the superior surface on which will be the uh, the uh, lining of the peritoneum will be present and there are four borders you can see here one border uh, which is in the front this is called as uh, the anterior border which is extending from the apex to the the urethra so this will be the anterior border between the two inferior lateral surfaces then we have the the posterior uh, border which is behind here so here will be the posterior border then we have the two lateral borders this is one lateral border the other is the uh, this one okay between the the apex and the ureter that will be the lateral borders between the two ureters will be the the posterior border and as i said it has a neck too so it is below where uh, the urethra opening uh, uh, the urethra is opening from the bladder so here will be the the neck of the bladder so it has an apex a base which is triangular in shape then it has the superior surface this is the superior surface to uh, inferior lateral surface on either side then we have the four borders one is the anterior border then we have the posterior border and two lateral borders on either side and a neck so these are some of the presenting parts of the bladder which can be easily identified whenever uh, the bladder is empty so here again you can see here this is the bladder here so this is the apex and here is the base and this is the superior surface where the the peritoneum will be covering and the intestinal coils will be sitting on the top of it and on either side we have the two inferolateral surfaces and here will be the neck of the bladder <coughs> and here this is the pubic symphysis when the two uh, pubic bones meet in the front so that forms a symphysis that is called as the pubic symphysis <coughs> coming to the apex so as we have seen already this is the apex it is directed forwards as well as upwards as you can see here so it is directed forwards as well as it is directed upwards and for to this uh, is attached is the the median umbilical ligament we'll discuss about this median umbilical ligament in a short while so this median umbilical ligament will be attached and it will be directed upwards and forwards the base is just opposite to that it is backwards as well as downwards and it is triangular in the shape so this triangular in shape as well as backwards as well as downwards okay so the base you should remember that the base is not here so the big base is at the back okay uh, in both sexes it is non peritoneal except in case uh, case of the males in the upper part it is slightly covered by the peritoneum because behind we have in case of male it will be the rectum and in case of female it will be the the uh, uterus as well as the vagina uh, we will discuss about again these relations later so um, so those will be the structures which will be behind so uh, that part will be non peritoneal except a part of it which will be descending downwards and so in case of male it is slightly covered by the peritoneum the base if not it is totally non peritoneal so here you can see this picture and we can imagine the both the things so in case of male this is the bladder and here is the rectum and this is the uh, the superior surface and the peritoneum will be lying on the superior surface as well as slightly invaginates down between the bladder and the rectum so a part of the base is covered by the peritoneum but in case of the female if you can see here so this is the bladder and here you can see the uterus and here is the vagina and the rectum so it is very compact 
pelvis. So here the peritoneum will be only covering the, the superior surface of the bladder. It cannot go behind and originate on the, the base, partly on the base. Okay. So here also there is other picture. Uh, this is from the other side. You can see the bladder in the front. This is the uterus and vagina and this is the rectum. And here you can see here this is the peritoneal lining covering the uh, the superior surface of the bladder as well as the the uh, the anterior wall of the the uterus. Okay. So here it is not going behind to cover a part of the base. Base is here. So this is the apex of the bladder and this is the base here. Okay. Coming to the relations, uh, as I said, in case of the male. Uh, especially for the posterior surface as I said uh, it will be actually the directly behind the bladder this is the case of male this is the bladder and here is the rectum okay and in between there are very few structures like one is the seminal vesicles will be present here uh, here this is the prostate here at the neck of the bladder and here behind will be the the seminal vesicles on the posterior surface uh, near the base or okay then we have the vas difference will be also present there uh, as well as the rectovesical fascia we can see here the, the fascia rectovesical fascia will be there in case of the female it will be the anterior wall of the vagina which will be in contact with the the base of the bladder so this is the anterior wall so here you can see this is the base of the bladder this is the vagina so this is the anterior wall of the vagina which will be present as well as the supravaginal part of the cervix a part of the cervix will be also in relation to the the base of the bladder here also you can see so this is the base of the bladder and a part of the the cervix you can supravaginal part of the cervix will be also in relation to the the base of the bladder so this is about the relations of the base of the bladder so this is the difference between in case of the male and the female pelvis okay so in case of the male pelvis we have the bladder and directly behind we have the the rectum and behind uh, in between these two we can see here this is the vas difference and here are the seminal vesicles but in case of female uh, between the bladder and the rectum there is also an important structure that is the uterus as well as in the lower part it will be the vagina so this is the uterus which is present okay so this will should be the difference between the male and female so it should be able to differentiate between male and female pelvis uh, co coming to the superior surface we already see this is the superior surface okay so it is almost triangular in shape and covered with peritoneum so this is the only surface which is totally covered by peritoneum so this is the peritoneum which is covering the superior surface of the uh, bladder and the relations are uh, the sigmoid colon will be uh, here sitting on this surface superior surface as well as the coils of the small intestine as well as in case of female it will be the uterus also okay so in case of male it will be the sigmoid colon as well as coils of small intestine uh, but in case of the female in addition to the uh, the sigmoid colon and the coils of intestine there will be also the uterus which will be lying on the superior surface if you can see here so this is the superior surface of the bladder this is uterus is lying so here also you can see this is the superior surface and the uterus is lying on the superior surface so this is how the superior surface is different in case of the male and female the relations coming to the inferior lateral surface so which are on the sides so it is downwards as well as laterally placed and this is also non peritoneal as i said only the superior surface is completely covered by the peritoneum both in case of the male as well as in case of the female okay so the inferior lateral surface will be on the sides here on either side it will be there and is it directed downwards as well as laterally and it is non peritoneal and the relations are one is the body of the pubis so so you have seen in the front will be the symphysis pubis on the sides it will be the the body of the uh, pubis as well as the the uh, symphysis pubis as well as down if you can see here there will be levetrani as well as the obturatory internus muscle all this will be in the uh, inferior lateral surfaces now coming to a very important space here this is called as the space of ritz 
space of reds this is uh, a small horseshoe shaped potential space so it's not an actual space it is a potential space between the anterolateral uh, as well as the pelvic wall as well as the the bladder so if you can see here this will be the the space very small space potential space it is horseshoe shape because it is present in the front as well as on the sides so that's why it is horseshoe shape potential space between the anterior lateral wall as well as the the pelvic wall anterior lateral wall of the the uh, the bladder as well as the pelvic wall as well as the uh, the bladder okay so this is a very small space which is present which is called as the space of reds which is horseshoe shape so it is around the uh, the bladder okay so this what is the importance of this space is it is it acts as a bursa and this will help in the uh, distension of the bladder whenever the bladder is full uh, as i said it uh, when this now at present it is uh, almost uh, slightly uh, uh, fill so it is uh, present in the pelvis when it is uh, completely uh, full totally at that time it becomes so uh, abdominal pelvic organ so it occupies a large space not only above but also it tries to push in the front so this area this space will help as it acts as a bursa whenever the bladder is uh, full distended so uh, how do you trace this space so in the front as we have seen already uh, this is the in the front we have the symphysis pubis as well as the the body of the pubis behind and sides we have the posterior true ligament uh, of the bladder uh, there are many uh, true ligaments and well as false ligaments we will discuss about that so uh, right now just know that besides and sides we have the posterior true ligament which will be uh, holding the bladder in its position and above we have the the peritoneum so above we have the peritoneum of the paravesical fossa so this is the paravesical fossa so uh, the peritoneum of this paravesical fossa will be present on the top and uh, below we have the puboprostatic as well as the uh, pubovesical ligament okay so there will be a ligament we will discuss about that if you can see here this is the pubovesical ligament which is covering around the the neck of the bladder the, the puboprostatic ligament in case of the male it will be the prostate present here below the uh, bladder at the neck of the bladder so this is called a puboprostatic ligament in case of the female because there is no prostate then it is called as a pubovesical ligament okay so uh, below will be here um, below will be the puboprostatic in case of male and pubovesical ligament in case of the female and on the medial uh, uh, we have the inferior uh, inferior lateral surface of the bladder on either side uh, medial side because the bladder will be totally closed now it is open but it will be totally closed so the medial surface will be the uh, the inferior lateral surface of the bladder and laterally we have the the fascia covering the levator ani as well as the obturator internus which is around the uh, the body of the pubis so what are the contents of this space of roots as i said it is a potential space uh, so it doesn't have much important contents except a thick pad of fat this is called as the retropubic fat because it is behind the pubis so it is called as retropubic fat as well as a few uh, plexus of vein these are called as the vesical plexus of the veins which will be draining the the bladder so uh, uh, except this nothing else is present here okay so this is uh, filled with the retropubic fat as well as vesical plexus of veins so what's the importance of this space of ridges as i said it acts as a bursa which allowed the distension of the bladder uh, along with that it also helps in the surgical approach of the bladder as well as prostate whenever you want to do some surgeries this is the best space because it doesn't have important contents so easily uh, you can dissect and you can approach the bladder through this space okay so that's why surgical approach of the bladder as well as prostate is much more easy here because of the non presence of the important structures okay so this called as the space of ridges <clears throat> so uh, the other parts of the bladder the anterior border as we discuss so this the anterior border it is extend from the apex as i said so this is the apex up to the neck of the bladder so this is the anterior border 
so here this is the picture showing uh, this picture share I have taken from the internet uh, somebody has drawn it very well okay, so you can see here so this is the apex in the front so this apex will continue the median umbilical ligament then we have the the posterior uh, 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 this is the apex and we have the the base basis behind here posterior and uh, which is between the two uh, opening of the two ureters and below we have the uh, the neck of the bladder where the urethra is coming out so it will be triangular in shape so that's why it is called a trigone so this uh, from the the base so this is the apex and the base now seeing the borders so here you can see here this is the anterior border extending from the apex up to the neck of the bladder so here you can see here so this is just opposite from the apex up to the neck of the bladder then we have the posterior border where is the posterior border so this is the border between the two ureters this is called as the posterior border so similarly here there are two ureters so this becomes the posterior border where is the lateral border which is extending from the apex up to the uh, each ureter so there is the lateral border on either side so there are two lateral borders so here apex up to the each ureter so this is these are the two lateral borders and then I said the neck is the uh, uh, the part where the ureter will be uh, the urethra will be coming out of the bladder so this is the lowest point where the urethra begins so this is the lowermost point of the the bladder so this is almost three to four centimeters behind the pubic symphysis as we discussed before in the initial stages so uh, in case of children I said this neck will be uh, near the upper part of the pubic symphysis but in case of adult it will be near the lower part of the uh, pubic symphysis so that's why the uh, the relation the distance between the pubic symphysis and the uh, neck of the bladder should be known so it is almost three to four centimeters behind the uh, symphysis pubis so all these are whenever the bladder is empty but in case of as i said whenever it, the bladder is full whenever it is distended then it is it almost becomes ovoid in shape whenever it is empty it is tetrahedral but whenever it is full distended it becomes ovoid so at that time there will be anterior inferior surface as well as a posterior uh, posterior superior surface so the anterior uh, inferior surface will be non peritoneal and the posterior superior surface covered by the peritoneum and there are two lateral surface which will be partly covered because now it is distended now much more area of the bladder is covered by the peritoneum than whenever it is empty okay then it has a summit as well as base and neck will be always fixed so the base of the bladder as well as neck of the bladder will be fixed okay coming to the the ligaments of the bladder ligaments of the bladder so there are two types of ligaments of the urinary bladder one is called as true ligaments and the other one is called as the false ligaments true ligaments are the actual fibrous bands uh, with a few strings of the muscular fibers so these are called as true ligaments whenever we call something as false ligament then it will be just the peritoneal fold so the true ligaments are the most important ligaments which will be holding the bladder in its position so the true ligaments are almost nine in number in case of the bladder there are nine true ligaments which are holding the bladder in its position these are made up of fibrous bands with a uh, few uh, fibers of the uh, muscles okay so what are these uh, true ligaments the first one is called as the median umbilical ligament a very important ligament which is running in the center okay so that will be called as the median umbilical ligament we have already seen from the apex of the bladder there is a structure which is running upwards so that is the median umbilical ligament so you can see here so this is the uh, which is holding the apex in its position so from the apex there will be a structure running the ligament that is called as the median umbilical ligament which is actually the uracus which will be draining uh, the the urinary bladder in case of the uh, the uh, fetus so once uh, 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 the newborn comes out then this uracus urac will be uh, totally blocked and it will be closed there might be conditions where it might be patent we'll discuss about that whenever we uh, come to the applied aspects okay so this is called as uh, the the median umbilical ligament or the uh, which is a remnant of the uracus 
then we have four uh, puboprostatic as well as the uh, pubovesical ligaments as we have seen in case of the males it will be the pubovesical uh, puboprostatic ligament in case of the male so here is the male and this is the prostate and this is called a puboprostatic in case of the female it will be pubovesical ligament okay so this will be four you can see here uh, two on each side one is called as medial and the other one is called lateral median as well lateral puboprostatic ligament in case of male and in case of female it will be called as the pubovesical ligament so here you can see the picture this is the bladder and here you can see the pubovesical ligament in case of the uh, females then uh, a pair of lateral ligaments will be also there so after this pubo-prostatic ligaments or pubo ligament there will be a pair of lateral ligaments on either side then a pair of posterior true ligaments then there will be a pair of posterior true ligaments so that will be also present on either side okay so these are uh, the nine ligaments so these are four uh, uh, one is medial one is lateral on each side so there are four and this is the uh, medial umbilical nerve fifth and a pair of lateral ligaments uh, as well as a pair of posterior two ligaments so all this become nine four plus five one the hand here there are two seven and these two become nine okay so all are in pairs except the median umbilical nerve because median means at the center so whenever it is center it will be only one so except this all others are in pairs two medial two lateral two lateral two pair ligaments as well as the uh, two uh, posterior ligaments okay all these are in pairs except the median umbilical ligament so there are totally nine true ligaments which will be holding the bladder in its position this is how the bladder is held in its position now coming to the false ligaments false ligaments on as i said they are nothing but the peritoneal folds so these are seven in number which are actually covering the two ligaments so there is at the center we have the median umbilical fold if you can see here there is the median umbilical fold which is covering the the median umbilical ligament just above the median umbilical ligament or the iracus there will be fold of peritoneum which will be covering so um, whenever you uh, reflect the uh, anti-abdominal wall and from behind you can see all these structures okay so whenever you uh, dissect the anti-abdominal wall uh, try to see uh, these structures from the from inside okay so one will be the median umbilical fold which is at the center then a pair of median umbilical ligaments uh, folds on either side so these are the medial medial umbilical folds so these are the median umbilical fold median and these are the medial so these medial umbilical folds are actually uh, the remnants of the obliterated umbilical artery obliterated umbilical artery then on lateral side we have the lateral umbilical folds on either side so these uh, folds are a pair of lateral false ligaments okay then also a pair of sacro uh, genital folds might uh, also be there uh, much more uh, uh, on the lateral side and behind so that is not shown in this picture okay so these are seven uh, folds which will present the first one is the center which is unpaired that is the median umbilical fold then a pair of uh, the uh, medial umbilical folds which are nothing but the obliterated umbilical artery then we have a pair of lateral false ligaments and then a pair of sacrogenital folds so all these are in pairs so they become six except the first one which is the seven okay so these are the seven false ligament they are nothing but the peritoneal folds so there are nine true ligaments of the bladder and seven false ligaments so here also you can see if you want to imagine exactly how the folds are there these are this is the peritoneum so this is the bladder and here is the median umbilical fold just uh, in front of the uh, above the uracus this is the uracus this is the apex of the bladder and here is the uracus medial umbilical uh, ligament and just uh, around that is a fold of peritone which is covering this this is called as the medial umbilical fold and then you can see here so here is the the medial umbilical fold so here is the medial umbilical fold then you can also have the lateral umbilical folds 
okay so all these are the nothing but the uh, just folds of the peritoneum which uh, the uh, the peritoneum which is lying on these structures now coming to the something called as the um, bed of the bladder so the bladder which is sitting on something okay or lying on something so whenever it is full uh, it will be relaxing and it has to uh, sit on something okay so that is called as the bed of the bladder so uh, what is the bed of the bladder uh, bed of the bladder so in the front we have the uh, already seen this is the bladder here so it is lying on the a very important bone that is the uh, symphysis pubis as well as even the body of the pubis on either side okay at the center we have the symphysis pubis and on the other side we have the body of the pelvis okay uh, pubis which is be uh, on which the bladder will be lying okay then we have the fascia of the levator ani the fascia of the levator ani will be also there as well as the obturator internus muscle which are deep inside as well as the retropubic fat we already seen the space of ridge which contain this retropubic fat which all will be present here then the ampulla behind we have the ampulla of the rectum so a dilated part of the rectum this is called as the ampulla of the rectum as well as in case of the female it will be instead of the ampulla there will be one more structure in the front that will be the anterior wall of the vagina in case of the male it will be the ampulla of the wall uh, of the uh, rectum which will be on which this bladder will be lying but in case of female the anterior wall of the vagina will be the structures on which the this bladder will be uh, lying down then the base of the prostate in case of male so the uh, the base of the prostate so here will be the prostate okay in case of the male so here it is not shown because this is pelvis uh, is of the female okay so at the neck just below the neck will be the prostate so that base of the prostate will be also forming the bed of the bladder as well as the superficial fascia of the urogenital diaphragm here will be the urogenital diaphragm which form the uh, the base for the bladder so all these structures form the uh, the bed of the bladder in the front we have the pubic symphysis as well as the body of pubis then the fascia of the levator ani obturator internus as well as the retropubic fat here then behind we have the ampulla of rectum ampulla of rectum in case of the males and it becomes the anterior wall of the vagina in case of the female then in case of male that will uh, the base of the prostate which is near the neck of the bladder will also form the the bladder bed as well as below that there is a, a, a thick diaphragm a muscular diaphragm that is called as the the urogenital diaphragm which also form the bed of the bladder all these structures form the bed of the bladder on which the bladder lies now a brief just a brief introduction to the histological features the details we will discuss uh, in a separate lecture this is not, uh, not the place uh, where we don't have the scope of discussing the whole thing just a few important highlights so uh, as just like any other hollow structure this is also made up of four layers mucosa submucosa musculus externa as well as the serosa the serosa or the adventitia is incomplete uh, in case of the bladder because partly it is uh, adventitia partly it is serosa wherever the peritoneal fold is there that will form the serosa so it is incomplete because only the superior surface is covered uh, then uh, other parts are adventitia because it is not covered by the the peritoneum okay the the muscular uh, layer is much more thicker here this has three layers and this has a special name this is called as the detrusal muscle detrusor muscle then we have the uh, the submucosa is uh, present everywhere except at the trigone trigone we have already seen trigone is that part where uh, which form the base of the bladder okay so at the trigone uh, this uh, submucosa is absent that is a typical feature then the mucosa is devoid of the muscularis mucosa the mucosa as you know uh, it is having three layers again okay the epithelium uh, the lamina propria as well as the muscularis mucosa so the muscularis mucosa is absent here uh, uh, so only uh, the uh, the lamina propria as well as the epithelium is present 
and uh, this has a special epithelium which is only specifically related uh, to the uh, the urinary tract so it is present this is called as urothelium so this bladder has a special epithelium called as urothelium so this is the transitional epithelium okay uh, so trans what is transitional epithelium everything we will discuss in a separate lecture in the histology lecture uh, some other time okay so here is the transitional epithelium okay which changes its shape uh, the cells of the cells changes the layer number of layers changes as the bladder will be full and empty okay <coughs> uh, coming to the interior features when you see the the bladder from inside you can see rugae these are nothing but the fold just like in case of the stomach here also we have the rugae okay so here this is how it looks like so this is the trigone when you cut the bladder and see from inside this is the trigone okay between the two ureters and the urethra so this is the trigone or the base of the bladder seen from inside so this is called an internal trigone and the remaining part is having showing rugae these are temporary folds which will disappear once the bladder is full these uh, rugae will disappear okay now discussing about the trigone so the internal trigone this is a very important structure so this is called as trigonum vasicae trigonum vasicae so whenever we study it from outside it will be called an external trigone whenever we study the base from inside then it is called as the internal trigone so this is equilateral in uh, uh, shape and size so because the distance between the two bladders and the urethra is same so this looks like an equilateral triangle on the inner base of the bladder so this form the base and uh, this is uh, almost equilateral uh, in shape the mucous membrane is tensier the mucous membrane when you see from here so it is quite different from the the remaining part here we can see it rugae but here it is totally tight and tense this is because of the absence of the submucosa as i said before there is a, a divide this part the trigone is devoid of the submucosa so this part becomes much more tense and it's uh, it is glistening okay it shines whenever uh, it is exposed okay it is shiny as well as tense because of the uh, deficiency of the submucosa in this trigone okay so this is the internal trigone so what are the boundaries the boundaries of this uh, trigone apex is directed downwards here near the uh, urethra uh, so it is directed downwards as well as forwards and this is the the site of the internal urethral orifice there are two orifice uh, 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 one is the internal the other one will be the external the external is one from where the urine is actually flowing outside okay so here will be the internal urethral orifice so at the apex will be internal urethral orifice as well as uh, the vulva psyche the base so here is the base so the base is for the uh, opening of the two two ureters the, these are the ureteric orifice on either side so almost they are uh, at a distance of two points uh, two to five centimeters uh, actually it should be 2.5 centimeters okay whenever it is empty so the distance between these two ureters is 2.5 centimeters uh, whenever it is empty but whenever it is full it becomes almost 5 centimeters okay so because of the distension of the bladder so it becomes 5 centimeters when it becomes 5 centimeters even this becomes the 5 centimeters because it is equilateral triangle <laughs> The structure of the trigon uh, so when you study we have already said uh, uh, this is part of the trigon uh, is defined of the uh, submucosa so whenever you study from within outside the first will be the mucous membrane so uh, it will be a transitional epithelium just like in other parts uh, deep to that uh, or uh, more superficial uh, uh, towards the outside that will be the there will be a trigonal muscle of the bell which is uh, uh, a special muscle which is present in the trigon then we have the fascia of the walled ass and the outside will be the detrusor muscle just like in other parts of the bladder the whole of the bladder is made up of the detrusor muscle here also there will be detrusor muscle so this is the structure of the trigon 
coming to the importance of the uh, this uh, trigon so this is the most fixed as i said the the neck of the bladder as well as the trigon is the most fixed part of the bladder whenever the bladder is uh, empties or whenever it is distended these are the two most fixed parts so because it is fixed part it is also the uh, dependent part the second is uh, it is highly vascular as well as highly nervous it is richly supplied by blood vessels as well as it is uh, highly uh, nervous in nature so a lot of nerves are there so uh, if it is damaged so there will be uh, much more severe bleeding as well as uh, it will be very sensitive uh, to uh, the stretch as well as the pain the third important uh, uh, point here to be mentioned is it is developmentally it is derived from the mesonephric duct uh, the mesoderm of the mesonephric duct so that's why if there is any defect in the mesonephric duct then there will be defect, defect of this part itself so these are some of the uh, importances uh, of this uh, the internal trigon now coming to the blood supply uh, blood supply of this uh, structure again as i said it is highly vascular especially the trigone so it is uh, highly supplied by lot of blood vessels uh, one is the the superior vesicular artery then we have the inferior vesicular artery then the obturator artery inferior gluteal artery as well as the uterine arteries so all these arteries will be supplying the uh, the bladder if you can see in this picture so this is the common iliac artery it is dividing into external as well as the internal iliac so all these are branches from the especially from the internal iliac artery so one of the arteries here if you can see here this is the the umbilical artery then we have the obturator artery here so one of the artery which is supplying the bladder is the the obturator artery then we have the uh, the superior vesical arteries as well as the inferior vesical arteries so these are superior vesical as well as inferior vesical will be uh, there so these are the arteries then we have the pudendal uh, artery uh, sorry uh, the uh, obturator artery which will be uh, the uh, present here uh, shown somewhere here okay this is the obturator artery then we have the inferior gluteal artery so here is the inferior gluteal artery shown then we have the the uterine artery is also supplying the uh, this uh, uh, bladder so this is the uterine artery in case of the female which will be also supplying the um, bladder so all these are the arteries the superior vesical arteries the inferior vesical artery the obturator artery the inferior gluteal artery as well as the uterine artery all these arteries will be supplying the the bladder uh, the venous drainage is by a plexus of veins this is called as the vesical plexus which i have told you it is present in the the uh, the space of ovaries so all these veins will be forming a plexus lot of veins which will form a plexus and this is called as the vesicle vesical plexus and this uh, vesical plexus will be finally draining into the internal iliac vein coming to the lymphatic drainage uh, this lymphatic drainage will be directly draining into the external iliac group of lymph nodes. So uh, this uh, 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 part of the bladder will be directly draining into the instead of the internal iliac. Internal iliac will be drained into the especially into the uh, 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 will be drained from the uh, the urethra. The external the uh, lymphatic drainage from the bladder will be mainly into the external iliac as well as the common iliac group of lymph nodes. Coming to the nerve supply, nerve supply as I said it is uh, uh, richly supplied with nerves. So the sympathetic supply is from the T11 up to the L2 level. So so it extends from the T11, T12, L1 as well as L2. All these together form a plexus called as the hypogastric uh, plexus and this plexus of nerves will be supplying the uh, the sympathetic component form the sympathetic component and it will supply the the bladder the parasympathetic component is from the s2 s3 and s4 so all these three are the uh, form the parasympathetic component and they will be supplying the again the the bladder through the pelvic splanchnic nerves 
the pudendal nerve which is also coming from s2 s3 and s4 supplies the the splinter urethra especially the the internal uh, splinter so this will be uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the supply to the the splinters then the sensitivity with pain especially there are stretch receptors which receive the uh, the pain especially the pain from the because of a over extension or over distension of the bladder or even sometimes the spasm so this is done by both the sympathetic as well as parasympathetic uh, nerves which will be uh, relaying the pain sensation uh, from the bladder so this is about the the nerve supply uh, to the the bladder coming to the development again development will be uh, dealt in detail in a separate chapter this is the, this is not the place uh, where we have the scope for discussing uh, having a long discussion of the bla bladder uh, just uh, a brief and uh, uh, note about the development of the bladder is the trig uh, trigonum vesicae so the trigonum you have seen this is mainly developed from the mesonephric ducts so you have seen these are the two mesonephric ducts on the either side and here is the cloaca from where the bladder is developed so here this is the cloaca and these are the two mesonephric ducts so mesonephric ducts and from here you can see the urethral buds also growing so these two mesonephric ducts will be joining together on the cloaca on the posterior part posterior wall of the cloaca and they form the trigone so the trigone is mainly developed from the mesonephric mesonephric ducts the, from the mesoderm of the mesonephric duct the remaining part of the uh, bladder is formed from the cloaca the endoderm of the cloaca will be forming the rest of the mucous membrane the apex is uh, formed by the absorption of the proximal part of the allantoic diverticulum we have already seen uh, the allantoic diverticulum which will be uh, forming a small uh, structure called as the uracus through which it will be turning into the umbilical uh, uh, forms a component of the umbilical cord <coughs> Uh, the musculature and other structures will be developed from this blank nuclear of the lateral plate mesoderm so this uh, a brief uh, note about the development of the bladder uh, whenever we have the scope we will discuss in detail about the whole of the uh, urogenital system in a separate lecture coming to the applied aspect uh, as i said uh, if there is excessive distension of the bladder up to a certain extent then it will rupture especially uh, uh, it will be around or above the 1 liter uh, capacity but sometimes even uh, with uh, 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 little distension and if there is any trauma at that time it might rupture okay the second important uh, aspect uh, clinical aspect related to the bladder is the chronic obstruction especially in case of the elderly males where we have the benign prostatic hypertrophy that lead to chronic obstruction and that leads to hypertrophy of the bladder itself uh, the second is structures in the uh, urethra itself might lead to sometimes uh, uh, the chronic obstruction of the as well as hypertrophy and sometimes the hydro ureters as well as the hydronephrosis if there is collection of the uh, urine because of the structures like here you can see here this is this x-ray uh, taken and here you can see if there is a, uh, a small constriction and because of that there is uh, high, high hydronephrosis here uh, there is collection of uh, urine within the the pelvis of the ureter okay that leads to the uh, collection of uh, chronic uh, uh, stagnation of the urine uh, in the ureters as well as even in the, the kidney itself okay so here also you can see here so again there is a stone here the ureter stone and that leads to this whole of the the uh, the ureter is obstructed and it is filled with urine as well as even the the minor and minor calyx as well as the the pelvis of the 
uh, the kidney it is also it is uh, filled with urine so this condition is called as on the other side it is uh, empty because of normal okay condition okay so this is called as hydronephrosis as well as the hydrouretus uh, the second third important uh, blood aspect related to the bladder is the congenital recto vesical fistula if there is developmental anomaly that leads to a fistula uh, in case of the male where the the bladder instead of opening through the urethra it will be opening into the the rectum okay in the rectum uh, in case of male and in case of the uh, female because there is in between there is the vagina also so it becomes vesico vesico vaginal fistula instead of vesico uh, recto vesical fistula in case of the male it becomes the vesico vaginal fistula in case of the female so instead of the bladder opening through the urethra it will be opening into the uh, vagina in case of female and in case of the male it will be to the rectum because that is the posterior structure so that's why the relations of the bladder especially the posterior uh, is important then uh, the condition like uh, called as the uracal cyst sometimes uracus this is the bladder here and this is the patent uracus at the apex this is the apex and from there we have seen the the median umbilical ligament so it is nothing but the the uracus which is the remnant of the uracus but sometimes this uracus might be patent and at that time still the bladder might be opening uh, it is actually opening in case of the fetus uh, uh, through this bladder it is uh, emptied into the the umbilical cord but in case of uh, after birth this will be uh, disappear totally and it becomes impatent but in sometimes it can be patent and then it might be opening again through this uh, patent uracus into the anti abdominal wall now mm, uh, sometimes uh, there might be uh, this is called uh, the uracal uh, uh, fistula so where it will be a patent and it will be opening outside through this uh, patent uracus into the anti abdominal wall sometimes there might be a cyst itself so part of uh, most of the part is obliterated but a small part is patent still but it is not connected to the bladder or nor outside into the external world so this becomes a cyst this is called as the uracal cyst and sometimes there might be only a part of it uh, uh, is uh, oh, 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 patent and that is opening into the external world but it is not connected uh, not patent with the bladder itself so the no urine is coming out but it might there might be a small sinus from outside okay this is called as the uracal sinus okay so this is the patent uracus where it is totally draining the urine to the anti abdominal wall and your uracal sinus where there is just a small opening and your uracal cyst where there is uh, on either side it is blocked and only a part of it is uh, patent okay this is called as uracal cyst sometime there might be a condition called as ectopia ectopia vesicae so this is ectopia means outside vesicae means bladder the bladder is outside sometimes the anterior wall of the bladder is not developed as well as the even the anterior wall of the abdomen as well as even the bones related to it and then the whole structure the whole bladder might be outside okay and the trigon of the bladder the posterior wall can be easily seen so this is called as ectopia vesicae <clears throat> then the eighth is a uh, blood aspect related to this is urinary incontinence which is a very important common uh, uh, complaint especially in case of the elderly males uh, in case of urinary incontinence the first one is the reflex bladder which is called so called as the automatic bladder this is especially seen in those condition where there is an road traffic accident uh, and that led to some spinal injury and there is a total uh, disconnection of the uh, this uh, the spinal cord from the upper part of the brain so the lower part of the uh, body is uh, totally paralyzed and and the bladder will be automatically uh, uh, having a reflex without uh, the control from the brain so this is called as uh, the automatic bladder where the bladder fills to a certain extent as i said when it reaches up to a capacity of 800 ml it will automatically uh, open itself and it will empty the bladder so this is called as uh, the reflex bladder sometimes there may be uh, the second condition is called as a tonic bladder 
where the bladder does not contracts and it doesn't uh, uh, empty the bladder itself this is called as outflow incontinence so whenever the bladder is filled and it starts just overflowing just like that without any uh, the contraction of the bladder this is called as atonic bladder where it cannot contract so so it is just uh, like a bag and whenever there is excessive urine collected then it will just start flowing through the uh, the urethra the third condition is called as uninhibited bladder uninhibited bladder where uh, there is no urge incontinence and that leads to no residual urine so the bladder start automatically uh, emptying itself okay so it doesn't inhibit itself so it doesn't retain any uh, urine even if there is a small collection of urine then it will be directly uh, there will be uh, urge continuous urge and then there will be uh, um, uh, incontinence of the no control over the uh, the uh, uh, maturation and there will be uh, the whole bladder is empty with no residue so these are some of the applied aspects related to the uh, the urinary bladder after this uh, we'll go to one more important structure which is related to this uh, in a, uh, which is very very small topic that is called as the, the ductus deferens which is also called as the vas deferens so the ductus deferens or the vas deferens is a thick uh, walled muscular tube which transmits the the spermatozoa from the testis or uh, uh, where it is formed uh, into the the uh, the ejaculatory duct which from through which it will be coming through the the urethra okay so here in the testis will be the formation of these spermatozoa and then they are matured in the epididymis then they will be collected and stored and then they will be passed through this ductus deferens all the way and it comes behind the bladder and then it opens uh, below the neck of the bladder where the prostate is present so uh, it is joining here through into the ejaculatory duct and from there into the the prostatic urethra the whole uh, length of this duct is almost 18 inches in length and it begins at the tail of the epididymis as you can see here in this picture there is the testis here where the sper sperms are actually formed and then they mature in the the uh, the epididymis epididymis has a head a body and a tail and at the tail from the tail begins the vas deferens or the ductus deferens so this uh, epididymis in its course it begins from the tail of the epididymis from here from the tail of the epididymis the, the whole thing is the epididymis this one here is the testis and my epididymis is, will be on the uh, the lateral side and posterior side okay of the testis and here from here begins the vas deferens so the vas deferens uh, will be beginning at the epididymis along the uh, the tail of the epididymis and it goes along the posterior border of the testis you can see here along the posterior border of the testis then uh, it will be uh, passing into the spermatic cord it forms one of the uh, structures in this spermatic cord so this is the spermatic cord which will be passing through the inguinal canal so this is the inguinal canal and this spermatic cord is uh, passing through this and it will come out through the deep inguinal ring it enters through the superficial inguinal ring and comes through the deep inguinal ring then goes into the pelvis it will be in the the greater pelvis or the false pelvis then enters into the true pelvis and it opens into the ejaculatory duct it passes from the uh, false pelvis into the true pelvis then goes behind the bladder and there there will be some anal vesicles uh, uh, around that and then this will be opening into the ejaculatory duct and from ejaculatory duct it will be opening into the prostatic part of the urethra this is the whole course of the uh, this uh, vas deferens the arterial supply is by the uh, superior mainly by one of the terminal branches of the superior vesicle artery as well as even by the inferior vesicle artery sometimes so mainly by the superior vesicle artery um, but sometimes it is occasionally also supplied by the inferior vesicle artery venous drainage is into the again the vesical venous plexus through which the bladder is drained uh, uh, um, and this uh, vesical venous plexus will be draining finally into the internal iliac veins development we have already seen this dollars from the mesonephric duct 
especially the the cloaca okay uh, as well as the the mesonephrine duct itself uh, coming to the applied uh, anatomy especially this is very important ducts especially in case of the sterilization in case of the males so uh, where uh, they cut this uh, duct vas difference or the ductus difference and this condition is called as vasectomy where they cut a part uh, uh, of the duct and they tie it on either side so that uh, there is no passage of the sperms uh, even though the ejaculation is there without any sperms so uh, this uh, kind of sterilization in case of male is called as vasectomy so this is all about uh, the uh, especially the bladder and also a brief introduction about the ductus difference or vas difference if you have any doubts regarding this you can definitely write to me and i will try to answer so these are some of my references thank you thank you very much if you like this video please uh, like the uh, push the like button below and if you like to see more of my videos and just subscribe to my uh, youtube channel and if you want to get uh, updates regarding anatomy uh, just uh, subscribe to my channel thank you thank you very much